Good morning. Welcome on this Friday morning to episode number 35 of Coffee with Campus Consultancy. Uh, as we wait for a few people to join the stream, and in just a moment, I'll introduce you to our wonderful guest, Miriam. If you are joining us, please let us know how, how has your week been? What have you been up to? What are you working towards? Let us know in the comments below. Yesterday, we had the most comments ever on the show when we had the wonderful Terry. So today, we'd love to hear from you. It's 8 a.m. What are you really doing at 8 a.m.? If you can give half an hour and join us, we'd love to hear from you. And today, we'll be talking all about how to set goals, how to set financial goals, and we'll be digging into that after this quick intro with our amazing guest. Yes. Uh, yay! Yay! <laughs> I love that intro so much. <laughs> so good, right? Um, oh, I love it. What am I? Uh, yeah, Anthony, who I always mentioned, made it, former student who now runs his own business and employs people and does cool things making videos. So Amazing. Go, Anthony. Makes me happy. Makes me happy when people do stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. All right. Before you do stuff, though, Miriam, you need some goals. So tell us all on a, on a Monday morning, bloody hell, tell us all on a Friday morning, was Miriam always good with goals? Was Miriam always good with money? Where did it all start? Absolutely not. I don't think any of us uh, really are because goal setting is, is a skill you got to learn at some point in life, right? So the way I stumbled upon it was I when I came to Australia, I was 19, had $300 to my name, which if you live in Sydney or Melbourne, you know it's just like- I won't even get you a coffee. Uh, no. <laughs> after rent? No, it won't. And uh, so- of course, that money was gone very quickly. And I kind of floundered and stumbled my way over the next year or two years trying to just survive, right? Yes. Um, and then when I was in a stable enough position to start saving or just thinking about other things in life mm -hmm. other than food and having a roof over my head. Yes. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing with it. So what happens when you don't have anything set in your mind is th there is a, there's no motivation behind your actions. So you can say, I want to save more, but if there isn't a goal in mind uh, about what I am saving for, what does it help me achieve in life? What does it translate to? Because most of us aren't saving for the dollar value of it. Most of us are saving because it means it's going to give us something else in life, like mm -hmm. time with loved ones, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so because there would be no goal, there would be no motivation behind it. And that means it just wouldn't happen because like then it's boring to save money. Like who wants to do that, you know? Do you think, do you think there's examples of, and just to play devil's advocate for a second, because I'm, I'm a staunch advocate of goals. I know lots of people who have achieved things without setting goals. So what do you think, how do you think it, the balance works between, obviously goals, I am a massive believer in, I think they're really, really powerful, but there's a really healthy debate out there between, no, you, know, you shouldn't have goals, you should have set habits. And it's not about the end results, it's about the process. Uh, so where do, you land, where do you land on that? How do you dig into that around, you know, can you, can you have meaning in your actions even if you don't have a goal? Look, absolutely is about habits. Can't achieve goals without habits that make those goals possible, right? Um, so I guess where I would land on them is this one step at a time. So if you're, um, if you're just starting out and setting habits, just focus on the one habit because, you know, we know that it takes about 60 to 90 days to establish a habit. Um, so we take on one habit at a time and build that. Uh, but I think goals give you direction. So you know yeah. where you're going, um, what's coming in the short, medium, long term, whatever it is, like you don't have to have a clear five, 10, 20 year goal, right? It's just kind of like the way a mentor of mine put it was it's, it's, a, it's a North Star that's just guiding you. So you know yep. roughly where you're going. For sure. And I think that's a really, is a really clear example here today when we talk about financial goals too, of like you can have spending habits uh, and one of the problems with increasing your income, we know all the research says as your income comes up, your spending habit rises like a phoenix to meet your uh, your income. And then all of a sudden okay. your savings, 
your savings jar has no more pennies in it. Um, so in terms of setting a savings goal, obviously with Money Girl and you spend a lot of time helping people and particularly helping women setting these different goals, these different areas. And again, we know from the data that women are disproportionately affected by, by sort of financial hardship and certain demographics and socioeconomic statuses and whatnot. How do you help people or where do you start with someone? If someone comes to you and they go, Miriam, I know you're all about goals. I know you're all about money. Um, you seem to have this part kind of together or you have a process. Where do I start? Like if today, the 29th of May, 2020 is when yeah. people go, okay, COVID's starting to settle down. I'm going to try to be in a better financial position at the end of the year than I am right now. Mm-hmm. Where, do, where does that conversation start? Amazing. Fantastic question, Josh. So I would start with creating a vision for what 31st December 2020 looks like. So get a blank piece of paper, um, write down the date you are doing it, so today, and then write down what my life looks like on 31st December 2020. And I want you to just sit and actually picture in your head what does it look like, okay? Like physically, tangibly, what's different or same in your life? And then... Go hold ahead. on, hold on, hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try something new today to see if we can do this. But let's let's say blank piece of paper and in 2020, let's also use a on, free online mind mapping tool and do the equivalent. <laughs> okay, so, so let's so do it with me. So you're sitting down, you know, say I'm, you know, I can be me or I can be a, you know, first year, say I'm a first year uni student, second year uni student who has no savings. I'm just basically scraping by and paying the rent. Mm-hmm. So w- w- where might I like my life to look like at the end of the year? What could that potentially look like? Okay, so it's possible that you want to have a wee bit of an emergency fund, a rainy day fund. Okay, rainy Um, day fund. Yeah, by 31st December. That's still six months away. Plenty of time for us to do something like that. You might also be thinking it's December, there's Christmas. I want to have a wee bit of money to give my loved ones presents. So Presents for loved ones. mm Mm-hmm. Um, what else might you want? Um, okay, tangibly, what else would you want your life to look like? Um, you might want to not work weekends anymore. I don't know. I don't okay. know. Second year was a long time ago, man. That's all right. So let's, <laughs> I guess what always helps is this. Whenever we do goal setting, it's always, if you have enough reasons to do anything, you can get yourself to do it. Like it's reasons and emotions and it's feeling what you'll feel if you're there. So, you know, if your presence are for loved ones, you know, how much first let's be specific and let's attach some emotions or reasons to it. So presence for loved ones, how much money financially, what are we talking about here? How much do you think you need presence for loved ones? Um, let's say it's 500. 500 bucks. You're going to be real generous this Christmas, $500. Mm-hmm. Great, awesome. And so what about the rainy day fund? How much do we want in there? We want $1,000 in there. $1,000 in there? Mm-hmm. Perfect. And say we're working weekends, we're working extra shifts just to get by. You know, my question is always, why would we be doing that? What would that? What do you think that extra money is going towards? Because most people aren't working rainy, like aren't working extra night shifts to put money away in a rainy day fund. Um, what I normally find is when most people are working that extra shift, it's like, I have to work it. I don't want to work it. I have to work it. Or what for? And normally it's going into something like rent or food that's or something like. That's right. It's a cash flow thing. So there's money coming in and out and it just, that that's how much they need um, to be sustainable. Right. Cool. Um, so the, the, what I would do after this is, yeah. So we've put, we, we're putting dollar values next to it, right? So if, if we don't want to work weekends, we kind of need to know how much we're earning um, every Saturday, every Sunday, um, because we need to replace that. Um, say our goal is to have weekends free, so we're going to replace that with something else during the week so we are still able to pay rent, et cetera, et cetera, so that we can have an extra day off to spend with friends or family, for example. I get it. So let's say you're not going to work the weekends, but instead of that income, you're going to spend 50 bucks on the weekend going out for breakfast. So let's say 50 bucks over the next 26 weeks is an extra 1300 bucks. So let's just say, let's take worst case scenario, you're not only losing money, but you're spending money on the weekends. So let's add all that up. And let's say the goal then for all of this stuff is to have 2800 bucks in the bank six months mm-hmm. from now. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Now that's, you know, it works out just before June. That's about a hundred bucks a week. Roughly, mm-hmm. if you saved 100 bucks per week, awesome. So where do you go from there? If someone goes, okay, I want to have 
2,800 bucks, which is more savings than more than half of the country, which is good to point out at this point. Um, when people get to, if someone's like, okay, I need to save a hundred bucks a week. How does someone go about that? What's the next step? Yep. Okay. So before we move forward, Josh, I'm just going to break down the very quick maths that you did there. Yeah. Yep. Um, because, so what's Josh done here is um, we, we imagined what our life would look like. Yeah. Um, and then we translated it into put a dollar value on it. So we wanted a pre to buy presents for our loved ones without feeling like we were drowning. Yeah. Um, so we put a dollar value on what that would cost us. Then we calc we um, figured out how much time we have. So we've put a deadline on it, 31st December. So we have a set number of weeks, fortnights, whatever, to achieve yep. that goal. And then we added our monetary costs together and divided it by the number of weeks we have available. And that gives us a very tangible thing to do right now is to save a hundred dollars a week right now before we move forward with how to do that i also want us to um put next to each of those goals what that goal means for us mm -hmm. um right so these are like the tangible physical goals we want a thousand dollars in a rainy day fund but what does that goal mean for you? For me, it means I can sleep peacefully at night without worrying about food or shelter the next day. Okay. So that might be say the, like that feeling, that emotion, that reason on the rainy day fund could be sleeping peacefully at night. What about mm -hmm. the idea of not working weekends, but instead um, actually getting to spend time with friends and family and having more of a social life? What does that mean? Yeah, and for, for me, that means having one extra day to build my the relationships that are important in my life. Relationships that are important. I love that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then what about the idea of presence for loved ones? What does that mean to you? So um, if I were to put myself in that position, let's say I spend that money each year anyway, but I feel guilty about it. I mm. struggled in come January, I struggled to pay my rent because I've bought presents for loved ones. Mm. And I usually put it on my afterpay account. Yeah. So what that means for me is a peaceful January. I mm. still want to have money to feed myself in January. And I want to be able to buy presents for my loved ones guilt free. Love it. So what we've crafted is 12 months from now, we how we want to feel is we want to sleep peacefully at night, we want an extra day to build our relationships, we want to not be struggling for, man, uh, for rent and not and have a peaceful January to look forward to, not have to put it on afterpay and feel bad about it. And then what that essentially boils down to is this goal and a, the sub goals are the little milestones, 100 bucks a week. Yeah, okay. So now we've got uh, a, a very real something, 100 bucks a week. Now I know that's yeah. what I need to achieve this vision. Uh, which otherwise seemed a little bit too out there. Yeah. So yeah. once we've got a hundred dollars a week, then the next thing we do is assess our cash flow. Now, cash flow is essentially just money coming in and money going out, right? And those are essentially the two things you do have control over in your money life is money coming in and money going out, yes. mostly money going out. Yeah. So there's only one equation to make it happen is income minus expenditure equals your savings. Yeah, there is no okay. other, there's no other like thing that's gonna make it happen. There's no secret, there's no nothing. So in that equation, you want the third thing, which is savings, you only control income and expenditure. Most of us have more control over our expenditure than we do over money, which is why we always focus more on the expenditure first before we move on to increasing our income. So when we're thinking about expenditure, what we want to do is we know we want to save 100 a week. We're going to sit down and get our bank statements from the last, say, four to six weeks. Um, and I mean, four to six, last four to six weeks have been COVID. So it's like exceptional take take a regular four to six week period okay go back to yeah. feb or something and go through um each each bank transaction and categorize it okay 
Um, you can categorize it as broadly or as specifically as you want, but basically what you want to do is do so, some of the typical ones, rent, utilities, transport, um, groceries, and other leisurely stuff that you spend money on. You can put it into one category, which is what I do. I put it in a fun spend, um, or you can break it down further if you want. Um, and that will give you an idea, a four to six week spend, when you categorize it, will tell you where your money is going. Yep. Yeah, and we wanna know down to the last cent where our money went, yeah? Yep. And now that you know where the money is going, I want you to think about, you need $100 a week, and now you know what that is worth to you, yeah? It is worth that um, mental peace, a good night's sleep, time with loved ones, buying presents for your loved ones to show them how much you care. Yeah, that's what that $100 a week is worth to you. Now I want you to go through your expenditure and see what is worth less. Mm, okay, exactly. I like that. So that's the, that's the big one. So you're doing some accounting, you're going through, you know, the only way to get more money is to earn more or spend less. So ultimately, we're looking at the spend less. And rather than spend less on something that you know, we don't spend money for no reason. We have an emotional attachment to it. There's a feeling we get. So now it's going, okay, well, let's create this feeling that's bigger and then let's compare it. Is there something that I care less about that I could delete? Um, awesome. Yeah. Okay, that's a good that's one. Right. That's, a, so that's a really good one. to eliminate, first of all, if there's something that you truly don't really value at all, um, just eliminate it. You. What are some What are some good examples there? What are some things that you see come up all the time that people have just you know they've subscribed to it or they're in the habit of just buying it every week mm -hmm. or they just never thought about how much it actually costs if you add it up over a year. Yeah. Habits and peer pressure is what we see the most common things. So habits, for example, Uber Eats is the most common one because we're so we're in the habit of conveniently ordering we're not in the habit of planning out meals and going grocery shopping so we end up doing it because it's just like 20 bucks 27 bucks a time and almost always when we do this exercise with people people are like oh, hundreds of dollars i spent over a couple of weeks yeah yeah so that's a very common culprit another common culprit is peer pressure so i go out every weekend I don't care about, like, I don't, but that's a very common one we sure. get. Like, I don't care about it. I don't care about going. I just want to see my friends. Yeah. Right. And friends say, like, let's go out to this place or that place. And I don't care about that expenditure. I just want to see them. So, what, what we're, um, a good thing to assess there is, um, is it, uh, what is it that you value there? Is it the going out or is it the seeing friends? Because if it's the seeing friends, we, we don't have to eliminate that expenditure because seeing your friends is important to you. Yeah. If it's important to you, then we want to just minimize that expenditure. Instead of going out every week and maybe we meet up at each other's houses um, every week and then go out once a, uh, once a month or something. Yeah? yeah. So that's the three step process I want you to follow once you know where you're spending your money is eliminate the things that are truly like, not adding value to your life and it's not in um in line with your own values yeah so if you're only ordering uber eats out of convenience and it's not because i value trying out new cuisines so much yeah i'm not supporting small business i'm just uh lazy That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and it's, it's, exactly. Like, what I'm saying is it could possibly be very important to you. Right. Yeah, so it could be. I, I don't I don't know. Like it might be very important. If it is, like go ahead. And if it isn't, just eliminate it. Like it's yeah. your hard earned cash. Like you work hours to earn that. Like, you know, don't just give it away. Give it away mindfully to causes yeah. that are important to you. Talk to me about so that so just to reiterate if everyone's tuning in, so the three steps. So you're eliminating, you're minimizing. Was there a third one? Redirecting. Uh, redirecting. Okay, yeah. cool. And so what's redirecting? Okay. So once you've eliminated and minimized, you will yep. then have a wee bit of extra cash flow, right? Yeah. Um, because you've saved a little bit of money on nonsense expenditure. Then you want to redirect that to your hundred dollar a week savings goal. Yeah, put it in the savings jar or something like that. That's right. And yeah. that has to be, if you're putting it in an account, 
which most of us are, that account has to be separate from your income and expenses account. Okay. Yeah. Um, we don't, we don't just survive on one, one account. That's, I don't know why we were ever taught that you need separate accounts and it's completely normal to have three, four or five accounts. That's yeah. fine. They should be zero fee accounts. Um, so you're not losing your hard earned money, yeah. uh, but put that extra redirect that extra money into a separate account. Yeah. Miriam, talk to me about this. And I see this pattern all the time. Um, I've been guilty of it in the past where you get your paycheck and you've got zero savings and you're like, this month, I'm going to go from no savings to $1,000. And you put all your money in your savings account. And then surprise, surprise, three days later, you've spent all your spending money. And then mm -hmm. you go, well, I'll just pull all the money out of that account. Where yeah. do you recommend? And then we put a guide out last year about this. And one guy saved three and a half grand from nothing. So we know this pattern works. But what do you recommend for people if, say, they come to you, they've got zero savings, which means mm -hmm. they have zero savings habits. Um, mm -hmm. So when it comes to, you know, if someone's saving 100 bucks a week for the whole year, does it go straight to that $100 in the first week you put $100 in the jar? Is it worth starting small, putting away $5, $10, $20, $50? Um, yeah, have you seen any of that? Like, we can think about it practically and do the math on it. But when it comes to people actually doing it, what do you mm -hmm. find works for best for people? Mm -hmm. So the most important thing is to start. It really doesn't matter um, yeah. how much you're saving. Even if it's $5 a week, I want you to put it away in a separate zero fee account. So you're not, it's not costing you anything, yeah. but put it away. And that's how I started, Josh. I started off saving $5 a week because when I was a student, after paying rent and utilities, that's all I had left. I had $10 a fortnight left. Um, that didn't account for fun spend at the time because as a student, I just wasn't earning enough to have a fun spend. So I put $5 a week away into a savings fund, which would eventually become my emergency fund. Yeah. Right. So over time, that $5 a week builds up to be something significant. And I'll tell you what, like start with $5 a week, even if it feels crappy, once you see week after week, you see the number building, it, it gives you a good feeling. You will feel proud of yourself. So it really doesn't matter if it's $2, $5, $10, $100, or $300, just start. Because remember, like the best time to start was yesterday and the next best time is today, right? Yeah, so I absolutely love that. Start. I love it. Uh, this is a question that's a, that's a big one and, I, and it comes up a lot. And forgive, it's just really big on the screen here. Uh, I'll see if I can change the that style while you have a bit of a read. That'll make it a little bit smaller. Thanks, Miriam. How can you make a savings a little bit more, whether $1,000 or more? Any tips on managing as an investment avenue? When I hear this question, and thanks, Chanel, sometimes when I hear this question from students, it comes up as like, it has a little bit of a get rich quick vibe about it of like, oh, what's the secret? What's the hack? How do I make something grow? And we just know for half the country with like no money in the bank, living paycheck to paycheck, like it's very compound interest is a beautiful thing, but compound interest on 50 bucks isn't a whole lot. Um, when people come to you with investment questions to start off with, is that a good place to start? Is that a later thing? Where do you think it, where do you think it lands? It, <clears throat> okay. So I will start off by saying, should have mentioned this earlier. Everything you're listening to today is general education only. Yeah. So I have mm -hmm. not taken into account any of your personal circumstances and I'm not a financial advisor. So if you do need personalized advice, go to a professional financial advisor, okay? Um, this question around investment, um, yeah. Uh, look, there, there's no such thing as uh, legitimately get rich quick schemes um, in the financial system. Like Josh was saying, like co compound interest is something that builds over years, even if you were to invest that money into other things, um, like, I don't know, it's if it's just a hundred dollars a week and you were i don't know putting it into the stock market um six months um the question was about december 2020 right that is too yeah. short a time for you to make very much on anything unless the principal amount going in was very big yeah. or it's a super high think. risk investment right like that's right you, you bought zoom in january 2020 uh, yes <laughs> Yeah. Without knowing about the coronavirus and you really lucked out. So those yeah. like, unless that is the situation, uh, the only way to really go about it is consistency over time is what will get you um, solid results. Um, mm. There's no quick in, quick out thing. 
Um, and yes, I like in the Money Girl, in the Money Girl program, we do build the steps that we build up. Um, we say that it is more important to build your emergent to understand your cash flow as the foundation, then build yeah. your emergency fund, then understand your um, your super um, and sort out your debt before you move on to investment. So mm -hmm. you can I mean, it's in, absolutely it's up to up to individual circumstances. Right. That's why I said yeah. like it's so personal. But those are what we recommend are the foundations like get your if you have high um, high interest consumer debt, it is worth paying that off before you ever like like start investing. Yeah. Um, because returns from investment will be a lot less than your high what you'll be paying on your high interest consumer debt. Yeah. And what I guess what we're talking about today too of, of just to focus in on, on goals and finance. For, if you just if we look at the data, whether it's MeBank, whether it's ABS, whether it's any of the reports, it just the amount of savings in Australia is abysmal. Um, and it's and I say that not from a place of judgment, just from a place of personal risk that we're putting ourselves and our families under. And I guess one of the struggles with that is if oh, I'm getting a bit of weird feedback. Okay, it went away. Cool. Um, one of the struggles with that is if anything ever goes wrong, like we've been beating this drum, you've been doing it. I talk about it in workshops as well. Like we've been beating this drum for years. And then the problem is then COVID happens and then we lose yeah. our job and then we've got to support ourselves for a couple of months without it. And then that just doesn't, we don't have that, that kitty there and it puts us in a huge position of risk. First, there are just some basic principles that have you gone through your credit card statement? Because lots of people are like, oh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the... Uh, whatever the thing is from Lion King, that's the, the elephant graveyard that I'm just not allowed to go into. I'm not allowed to download that credit card statement, you know, versus yeah. like staring that beast in the face and going, where is my money actually going? The same way with time. Where is your 168 hours in the week going? Um, if we get the money in and there's too much month left at the end of the money, that's a problem. So it's like, do we know where that's going? Ignorance isn't bliss. I guess the first step is like getting all Sherlock Holmesy on it, figuring out where the money actually goes. Then mm -hmm. just acknowledging we teach it like a shoebox. More money has mm -hmm. to go into the shoebox than out of the shoebox. Same with the there business. Want to have a profitable business? It's real simple. You have to make more money than you spend. You know, like it's 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 that. Literally, just as simple as that. There's there's no other secret sauce to it. Like there's no, and that's I think, and to, then to do that is hard, right? You need self control, and you need a good product, and in personal finance, you need good habits and things like that. Yeah. But the okay. principles are important. Um, Josh says self control, so I'm a I'm a firm believer that you should never rely on self control. <laughs> um, human willpower. Okay, research shows your your willpower will fail you. Okay, because willpower yeah. is like a muscle. Um, it is it is strong and gets tired and weaker throughout yeah. the day, throughout the, so you do not want to rely on your willpower, which is why we build those habits of putting, if it's a hundred dollars a week in our example, we build a habit of auto debiting a hundred dollars a week into a separate savings account. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't rely on your willpower to transfer that money. The bank or whatever app is doing it for you. Uh, do not rely on yourself. Cool. I want to challenge that only for the fact of self-control, like literally is controlling your impulses and things like that. So I think, yes, you can set up that, but like, unless you've, unless you've asked a loved one to hack into your bank account, take your money and not give it back, you still know you can access it. Right. Okay. So I think automate it. So it's automatic. Yes. But then I, I, at the, ultimately, I think this idea of we can't give our power away. We can't, I don't think it's wise to say, Oh, we'll, we'll just we'll rely on the bank to make sure we save money. And they're like, well, the bank forgot to take the auto transfer out, or I only set it up for six months. Like we've we've got to put but ourselves in the world, you know. Yeah. We've got to take responsibility, whether it's our goals, our careers, um, our grades at uni, how much we study. All these students that we're on so many workshops right now, students are like, I'm not motivated. It's like that. That is the point of uni is to see if you can be motivated. Like yeah. it doesn't matter what you're studying, but it's like, can you get yourself through something that's hard? Because it's it's too easy right now. Oh, the government, oh, the uni, oh, the bank, oh, the, the market. It's like, no, we have to. I just believe we have to take responsibility. If we want a thousand bucks in the bank at the end of the year, no one's doing that but us. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And and that's why you got to sit down and understand your income um, yeah. your, and, out, and outflow. Um, and, and you got to do it because it's not... It's not gonna um, happen by itself, and a lot of us think that when when I earn more money, 
I will therefore have more left. And so I will automatically kind of like have have savings then. It's not going to happen. That's why we always start small because the small steps add up to big change. And like Josh was saying, if you don't establish the habit right now, as your income goes up, your expenses will go up proportionately. That's called uh, lifestyle creep and happens to the best of us. Yeah. Um, so it's it's about establishing that habit at five dollars a week. If you do that now, you will be able to do that later down the line with five hundred and five thousand dollars a week. I love it. I love it. Well, until we get everyone up to five thousand dollars a week, which would be just a treat. Uh, starting today, I'd love to know if you're in, if you're listening, either jumping in the comments, send us a message afterwards, whether to myself, to Miriam and myself, to just Miriam, and let us know what you're looking at towards the end of the year. Do that exercise that we shared up before. I'll pop it up on the screen one more time. Map out, as Miriam so generously shared, map out, you know, where do you want to be in six or seven months, as, as was well pointed out, kind of seven months away. Uh, what are a couple of things that you would like to establish? Why would you love to establish them? What does it mean to you? How do you want to feel? How would it make your life better? Put a price tag on it. You're like, I don't know how much I want to spend on presents. We'll estimate. Is it $5, $50, $500, $5,000? Even at an order of magnitude. Add those numbers up and then you'll have a tangible real goal. Divide that goal by the number of weeks and you know what sort of habit you need to set up. And then as Miriam so wisely shared, going down, getting curious about those statements over the last six weeks or six months, figuring out where that money kind of goes, um, sitting down, eliminate some of it, redirect some of it, minimize some of it, um, and then start small, I guess, is that big message. Can you say, can this week by the end of May, even if it's it's whatever it is today, the 29th of May, can that savings account have $1 in it? Can there be a new free interest for in, like cost-free account? Can it have $1 in it by the end of the month? And then where might it be by the end of June and then the end of July? And then if you wake up at the end of the year and you're like, ah, oh, I've got 800 bucks or I've got 300 bucks. It's a great position. You're still winning. You're still winning. And we know with e-commerce, with all the stuff like the job keeper, job seeker and everything in the US, e-commerce is booming because everyone just got a thousand bucks. And so the problem with that is like, great, well, we need that money to pay our rent. Awesome. But like that extra, that extra thing that we're buying, if a little bit of that could be chunked off and put in a savings account where you'd be at the end of the year. Um, you don't just wake up at the end of the year with that money. You wake up with six months of a good habit being built and reinforced. I love it. Miriam, that's amazing. If people want to, I mean, this has been quick fire. We're going 35 minutes, we're barely taking a breath. Um, if people want to know more about what you do, um, and I think your, your message with Money Go is super powerful. So I'd love for you just to tell people what that is and if what they want to connect. If they want to know more about this, if they're in a school, if they're in a university, if they're in a workplace, um, as you say, lifestyle creep, grads out there who are all of a sudden on a 60, 70 grand a year. If we, We've never been taught this stuff, you know? So yeah. it might be affecting them too. So if it's schools, workplaces, unis, if people want to find out and go deeper into this, bring you in or do a session or something like that, what's Money Girl and, and how can people find out more about what you do and what you offer? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Josh. So um, Money Girl runs a financial education program um, for for students, young grads, grads who've been in the in the in work for a couple of years, um, and we go through all of this stuff, the basics of money management, and even understanding your super tax. And we talk about goal setting and investment 101 as well. So um, we run them as workshops, and currently enrollments are closed. We're running a program right now. But you can find out more on moneygirl.co, that's moneygirl.co, and you can subscribe to updates there. And you can reach out to us over there as well if you wanted to host us in your school or university or workplace. Awesome. That's super, us. super cool. There we go. There you are. So if anyone wants to check that out, uh, whether it's for individuals, whether it's for organizations, subscribing, Miriam's right there and Melissa's there as well. Uh, and if people want to reach out directly, is it best to go through the website, the contact us? Is it best to reach out to you personally? You can reach out to me on LinkedIn. If you just Google Money Miriam, you will find me. So whichever platform you find me on, LinkedIn is uh, is great. Reach out to me personally. Happy to chat. I love it. Awesome. And Steph Paul has said, you sold me, which is a, is a good little pun there, Steph. Don't think I, I missed that one. I like it. <laughs> 
Awesome. 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 Well, Miriam, thank you for today. If you've tuned in today, uh, really thank you for coming and joining us. We know it's a weird, it's kind of a weird thing to, to, to talk about on a Friday morning. Okay. My goals and my money, but there's no, there's no time for this. We don't have a day in the week, a day in the calendar. We don't have a public holiday to have a day off and assess your finances. All that public holidays, it's like, have a day off, go to the races, spend all your money. So that might be worth thinking about. What would it, what would it mean for you today, this weekend, sometime before the end of the financial year, just to sit down, look at your money, and then figure out where do I want to be six weeks, six months in the future. Um, Miriam, thank you for your time today. You're amazing, as always. Thank you for having me, Josh. I had a really, really great time. Yeah, pleasure. Likewise. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you again next week. This is going to be 35 episodes deep. We'll be live on Monday for episode 36. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.